is for my brother Alex, who works at, in IT up in the state of Oregon, and he has to manage a lot of cloud, a lot of servers, and he's evaluating tools like Puppet Chef and SaltStack. And I wanted to see what uh, this new world is all about. And we have the team from SaltStack in the house. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Mark Chen. I'm the CEO and co-founder of SaltStack, and uh, I spent the last uh, you know 10 to 12 years working in enterprise software, and uh, I got tired of a career on Wall Street. Ended up uh, getting back into the startup scene, and then uh, joined SaltStack here about a year and a half ago. Very cool. And who are you? I'm Tom Hatch. Uh, I'm the founder of SaltStack, and I started working uh, or started making the Salt project in February of 2011. And uh, before that, uh, I was an infrastructure architect for the U.S. intelligence community and for a number of startups. Wow, so we should talk about the NSA, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't deploy any of those. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, it, you know, the government buys lots of servers and has lots of clouds now. We, you know, OpenStack is being used all over the place. So it, it, tell me what, what it is that SaltStack does and what differentiates it from the puppets and the chefs because they probably do something similar. Mm -hmm. So SaltStack is an infrastructure automation technology. We focus on um, an ultra high speed communication bus and then providing things like configuration management, uh, server automation, and then some capabilities around monitoring as well. And so SaltStack's been uh, proven to be a very fast, scalable, and flexible solution in this particular space, which is why I think that it's uh, become highly adopted over the last couple of years. Yeah, and it's meant for uh, people or companies, mostly enterprises probably, who have cloud deployments, right, and need to manage cloud. Yeah, or some of the uh, yeah some of the benefits of Salt is that it's made it's engineered to be extremely simple to set up and use, um, but also to scale. And so we've got a lot of users who are startups and small companies, uh, but we've also got quite a few users who are in the many tens of thousands range. Um, I mean, LinkedIn, for instance, is managing, again, many tens of thousands of servers using Salt. And so a lot of the benefit that we hope to uh, convey to our users has to do with the fact that they can start with Salt early on and it's gonna grow with their company as their company grows. They're not gonna need to rip and replace as, uh, as things get bigger. What, uh, tell me about the competitive landscape and how you guys compare, or, or uh, why, why, why did you be, be, beat out the other guys at the LinkedIn account, for instance? There, there have been a number of players over the years that have provided infrastructure automation, right? You've got uh, you know, more legacy systems that have been out in the environment for quite some time. And then about eight years ago, you saw Puppet Labs come into the space, and six years ago, OpsCode. Uh, came about even before that CF Engine was doing things in this uh, in this realm, and so SaltStack we feel has a, sort of a second mover advantage because we've been able to present to the market a series of solutions that focus on speed, scale, and flexibility in a way that previous competitors have not been able to. Uh, we feel address those issues. So tell me what's happening in the data center today. What you know, uh, what kinds of strategic shifts are happening in business that's causing your company to get hot? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot shifting in the data center right now. And it's been really interesting to watch different users and what different uh, companies are doing. So you've got everything from uh, highly cloud-centric data centers uh, that have private clouds and they've moved everything onto the cloud. We still see a fair amount of bare metal data centers out there. Uh, and we see it for a lot of strategic reasons. And then the whole SDN movement is becoming uh, more of a reality. SDN, and Software Defined Networking. Yes, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Which uh, we, we interviewed at NYSERA when they were just a startup. Now they're a piece of uh, VMware, and you guys are at the VMware conference. That's why I got you here. Um, tell, it, how, how does uh, SaltStack fit into that new world where, where you can completely do everything in software and not have to go and re reconfigure your data center with a new Cisco switch or something like that? Yeah, well, some of the benefits that software brings into this world, and really it's one of those enabling engines because it makes the deployment of anything that you're creating so incredibly seamless. It makes it very, very easy to be able to stand up whatever systems and configure it in whatever very flexible way that you want. Now, on the flip side, and one of our big differentiators with other guys in the config management space, 
has to do with the fact that we also bring orchestration to the table in such a fantastic way and the remote execution bus that SALT has. The ability for SALT to go out and uh, query real-time data for about the infrastructure and then make decisions on it uh, is, a, is a really fundamental model in the ability to yeah, dynamically change what's going on in infrastructure and keep up. And then on top of that, the added functionality that we have with respect to uh, continuous code deployment, uh, continuous management of systems, and real-time monitoring and real-time reactions to what's going on. It allows you to use SALT as this central hub of what that software-defined data center really looks like. If, if I worked at a big enterprise, a, a Chevron or Procter & Gamble or whatever, and I, I'm evaluating the, the, this new way of networking, uh, going to OpenStack, for instance, and moving things into the cloud. What is? What do I need to know? What, what should? What kinds of questions should I be asking in that first meeting with you guys? So the thing that, uh, well, that really helps us in those meetings has to do with finding out what what that data center's real needs are. Salt comes in and can solve a lot of different problems and in a lot of different ways. So it's, again, it's easy to set up and easy to use, but something that we found over and over again is that someone will come in and they'll say, okay, I'm gonna start using SALT as a replacement to say um, some other config management system. And they start to realize that they have a lot more with respect to what they can do in their infrastructure. And so it's good to start looking around and saying, first, let's get to know what SALT is, get to understand its differences and the fact that it is this remote execution system. Um, and then start to, under, and once you've got a little bit of that understanding, and it only takes, it doesn't take very long. Most people say that they're comfortable in um, yeah, a half hour to an hour, and they start to get it. And then start evaluating where it can fit inside of your infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, one thing I'm hearing from startups is, you know, they, they start up on probably Amazon Cloud or Rackspace Cloud, and they start growing up, and they start becoming a LinkedIn or a Facebook or an Instagram. And they start looking at, oh, sh should we uh, switch to our own data center for cost reason? Or some other, uh, other startups are switching to their own data center for privacy or keeping mm -hmm. their stuff out of the NSA. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing that a little bit. When you're a startup, it's a different thing than bringing an existing uh, enterprise system in into the cloud. What's your uh, advice to the startup guys who, who might be thinking about their needs as they go into a data center from a public cloud, for instance. So I think that within the startup world, and uh, you know, we've certainly gone through our evolution as well, and uh, you know, we're still growing as a company. And so I think that from month to month, you're looking at cost and you're looking at ease of use, so that you can just get, uh, you know, get your product to market and get the uh, and focus on your core competency as a company. Um, so we do find a lot of startups that will start with SaltStack because it is so easy and, and, and quick, as Tom mentioned, to get up and running in your environment. Uh, and then as you scale, you can start to continue to use Salt in that environment as you get to become Instagram size or LinkedIn size or yeah. whoever it might happen to be. Does it help you, uh, does, does having Salt help you work, move workloads from uh, you know, your own data center or your own private cloud to a public cloud and back and forth because, you know, when you're young and nimble, you are playing around a lot, you know, and, and maybe you need some things on, on a bare metal server. You need a MySQL server to be there, and you need uh, your pictures up on, you know, Rackspace Cloud, right? Right. Yeah, SALT comes with a lot of routines that allow you to very seamlessly manage things in, in a hybrid cloud environment. So it's really easy for a startup to say that they can start deploying their servers and testing their services and get their initial um, offerings up on a cloud, uh, but everything that runs on a, uh, on a public cloud with SALT will run on a private cloud or on bare metal. So yeah, it's, again, it's really easy to make those transitions. It's something that people really don't need to worry about right off the bat because those transitions will be purely additive to what they've, to what they've already created. No. What, how, how do I pay for this? How, how do you guys get paid? What's your business model? SaltStack Enterprise is the uh, licensing model. It's an annual subscription, and uh, there's a per node price uh, at this point. As you scale up and you have uh, you add volume to those nodes, then the uh, obviously the pricing structure adjusts and changes. But we're really looking to bring in our customers and to sort of wrap our loving arms around them as a customer, and not just provide them with a license that's curated and tuned and differentiated in some ways. 
Um, but what it does is allows them to then receive access to the support, to the consulting, and to, to aspects of training as well. Yeah. Is there something I have to do to my data center to make it really rock and roll with SaltStack, or, or does it just sing on any on any infrastructure that I would already have? Yeah, Salt will run on any infrastructure. Well, any reasonably modern infrastructure. If you're running like Windows 98, that might cause us some problems. <laughs> <All right. laughs> And uh, is there anything else that a developer or a CTO that would be watching this needs to know or, or should, should think about before uh, uh, giving you a call? No, you know, I don't think so. I mean, uh, we, we try to make things very simple and straightforward, very easy to understand, and uh, SALT is made to solve whatever, the, whatever their problems are. I mean, if anything that we could communicate, it's that SALT solves a lot more problems in the data center than just your classic config management use case. Uh, virtually anything that you need to automate inside, um, on a server level, SALT can automate, and can automate in a very clean and straightforward way. And so I guess, I guess that would be a really good thing to, to keep in mind to consider. Yeah. Any other last uh, trends that you're seeing happen inside? What's that? Oh. Uh, do we have a demo? I didn't see that. Yeah, we've got okay. a, a video I can talk to. Oh, okay. all right. I'm going to yeah. start to say, is there anything else? So I'm going to cut it there. So I understand you have a uh, beta GUI coming up. Oh, okay. Take a look at it. Great. Yeah. Tom will talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Seen here first, literally. We have, this hasn't been seen outside the walls of the company. So oh, cool. Yeah. Sell, so. Awesome. First year with Robert School. All right. Three, two. So I, I uh, you know, I hear you have a new uh, uh, version coming out, and I, I hear you have a little sneak peek at what that what that might do. That yeah, we're we're really excited about our new version because what's uh, what what we're bringing in uh, the not that seventeen release of Salt is this is a new graphical interface as well as a number of other features. Now what we're looking at here is still pretty alpha, and what, and we're seeing that uh, you're able to go back and look at historic jobs that were run. Some of those data visuals, again, are pretty rough still. Um, so, okay, so we're able to go through and look at previous jobs that have run. We've also got summaries of the minions, as we call them out there, and some of the data associated with them. Did I? Okay, so we've got our new GUI coming up in the not that 17 release, and we're really excited about this um, because it enables the end user to have a completely event-driven view into everything that Salt is doing. And again, Salt is a asynchronous, event-driven system. And the benefits that we see with this is that we can get real-time data just flashing up on this graphical interface exactly as it comes in, which makes the experience a lot more seamless. And we're able to then go in and dive into specific information about target uh, minions, as we call them, and look at exactly what's going on in the infrastructure and look at it real time, not just a historic view. And so we're really excited about this coming out. This, again, what we're looking at, it's, it's really alpha. Uh, it's going to be a lot more polished before we get that release out. And even the, uh, the initial release of this is going to be pretty rough because uh, I mean, this is the first one. We're open source, and we like to put things out in the open as quickly as possible. Now, it's really cool, and you get to see how the, the, the real-time nature of running a data center now and how you can tune. Um, what, what kinds of tuning are you seeing uh, companies trying to do to get even more performance out of their clouds? Uh, yeah, a lot of the tuning that we're seeing companies do is that they're trying to maximize the uh, hardware resources that they have, and that's, that's an older thing. I mean, we've been trying to do that for a long time. But a lot of the benefits that we see with cloud computing is that it's a lot easier to tune exactly what is happening where, and one of the big benefits that we're, that we're bringing to the table is the ability to make those real-time decisions. And so a lot of the expense also ends up being in the administrative cost of that data center, of course. And we've had a lot of our users come back, and they've been very excited about the fact that they've been able to do so much more with so much less uh, manpower. And so that tuning has been big, and that's been a big reason why a lot of our users have made the switch from other systems, is because they've come back and they've said, after we evaluated SALT, it was clear that it was going to take fewer man hours to maintain this system in the long term. And uh, a lot of our early adopters 
have come back and reaffirmed that that is still the case, that they're able to maintain smaller teams, manage substantially more, and get more done at the end of the day. Yeah. What was it like to start a company in, in this realm? Because I, I hear you guys started in a, somebody's garage or something like that. Oh, well, yeah, we, we started in my basement. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're from Utah, so you can't do it in the garage. We have winters there. Yeah. <laughs> it gets cold. <laughs> And, and now you have d dozens of employees, and so things have gone well, huh? We do, yeah. yeah. As we began, it was just Tom and I working uh, in the basement and, you know, in each other's homes. But uh, as we've begun and, and really expanded the company out, we've got about 15 employees in the company today. Uh, we're very engineering-centric today, and we're continuing to scale out and build uh, you know, our, high, our sales and marketing teams. Um, you know, one of the interesting things about starting companies is that uh, you know, you, you cross your fingers and hope that things continue to go as well. And, and one of the nice things about being open source in Origin is the fact that uh, you know pretty quickly whether you're going to succeed or fail. Yeah. Uh, and it's been nice to see the, uh, the rapid adoption in the community. Today we've got about 550 active code contributors from our community, which is, uh, you know, a, a great growth trajectory. Now uh, you're, you're up there with OpenStack on GitHub, right, in terms of, uh, of contributors and, and activity, right? Yeah, last year uh, on GitHub, they put the, uh, they had a blog post called The Octoverse, and they went through a lot of statistics about what was going on on GitHub, and uh, one of those lists that they put up was the most uh, diverse developer communities, and uh, we were the eighth largest developer community on all of GitHub, and uh, right behind OpenStack Nova, which was number seven. Very cool. So, yeah, that was very exciting. Very cool. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming in and uh, talking to me about it. What you guys are doing for uh, people who are running clouds is really important. So it's uh, worth uh, uh, keynoting uh, on that. So thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Appreciate thanks. It. It's, a, thank you. it's a pleasure.